Thank you. So obviously that's lots of talk about the future of the Royals, but that's not all that people think about whenever they come to baseball. Baseball is maybe more than any other sport, a sport that's about the past as much oh as anything goodness. else. Oh my goodness, nostalgia to yeah. boot, right? Uh, the Kauffman Stadium where we're sitting, this was not the first home of the Royals. That was Municipal Stadium, and it has incredible Kansas City history, including the Kansas City Monarchs. You know, there is a place that honors all of the Kansas City history that happened there, and it's getting revitalized. We talked to Bob Kendrick from the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum about that. We're at 22nd in Brooklyn and you are here in what used to be Municipal Stadium, an incredible piece of Kansas City history. So much happened here. Lou Gehrig's last at bat. The Beatles played right where we're standing. This is the first home of the Kansas City Royals, the first home of the Kansas City Chiefs, but you cannot talk about what happened here without talking about the Kansas City Monarchs. So I'm so glad Bob Kendrick from the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum joined us to tell us about that really important history. Why is this so important? What happened here, Bob? A lot of history was made at this very site. You rattle off some of those historical moments that were a part of Old Municipal Stadium. No one made more history at this site, though, than the great Kansas City Monarchs. They won World Series in 1924. They won another World Series in 1942. This, of course, is a kiosk of Buck O'Neill while he was playing first base for the Monarchs, and he always said this 42 team was his favorite team. And, of course, that's the team that featured the heart, the Casey Hart the one that generates so much civic pride, was on the sleeve of the Monarchs. And they literally wore their heart on the sleeve because it was their way to express their pride in the heart of America. And so the heart of baseball in this great city really happened right here at this site of old municipal stadium. And we're standing, which is now Monarch Plaza. Yes. A lot of uh, you know attention and history dedicated to what happened here but it needs repaired, revamped, if you will, and that's something that you guys are planning on doing right now, right? Yeah, no, we're getting ready to uh, restore this plaza. It was dedicated in 2012 when Kansas City hosted the All-Star Game. It was beautiful. The infrastructure has held up pretty well, but over time, weather has kind of helped deteriorate the, the, the plaza, so we're going to restore it. We will rededicate it on Friday, May 6th, of this year, which coincidentally marks the anniversary of Jackie Robinson's first game at this site. And, and we'll have the dedication ceremony on May 6th at 11 a.m. to rededicate Monarch Plaza. Monarch Plaza. And speaking of Jackie Robinson, we, we mark Jackie Robinson Day each year, but this year is special. Tell us about that. It is really special because this year marks the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson's breaking of Major League Baseball's color barrier. And Lindsay, as I've always said, you cannot tell the story of the integration of baseball without Kansas City and without the Negro Leagues because Jackie's illustrious career began right here in 1945 with the Kansas City Monarchs before he became the chosen one to break Major League Baseball's then six-decade-long self-imposed color barrier. And Jackie Robinson's breaking of the color barrier was not only good for baseball, it changed us from a societal standpoint. It was essentially the beginning of the civil rights movement in this country.